Oh god, that was the altar. I didn't mean to summon him yet. Okay, um... <laughs> Ouch. Ow! Hey there, people! So today I am making my way to the Jungle Temple, which is sort of like the jungle's version of the dungeon, but a little smaller, and it's got a boss at the end. So, um, first of all, well, you can see my arena up there from when I defeated Plantera. You can only access the Jungle Temple after you've defeated Plantera, or with uh, equipment that you get after defeating Plantera. Um, it's this orange thing with these orange bricks. They're called lizard bricks because there's lizard uh, enemies in the jungle temple. So um, I basically dug all the way around to find uh, where the entrance to my jungle temple was. Uh, it's usually around the top left, I think. So uh, sure enough, that's where it was. Now mine was actually underwater when I got here. So I dug down and drained some of that water out. But uh, here we are. We're at the entrance. And when you defeat Plantaria, you get this temple key that opens the jungle temple door. So I am ready to enter the jungle temple. It's now unlocked. Um, now one thing about the jungle temple is there are a lot of traps. So there's a few things you can do to detect those traps and avoid danger. One is the danger sense potion. So I'm going to take one of those. There you go. Uh, when that, yeah, see there's spikes and stuff too. Um, and so the, the traps in the jungle temple are not only more frequent than in the dungeon, but uh, they're also more dangerous. And there's two main enemies, flying snakes and then the lizards themselves. Uh, so there's a lizard uh, statue there. Maybe I should take that with me later, I'm not going to worry about it now. But there are uh, jungle uh, chests. Wow, I'm getting beat up already. <laughs> All right. I'm going to switch to my gun. Okay, so in the jungle chest, you will find lizard power cells. You're going to need that. I'll tell you a little more about that in a bit. Um, I'm going to take these torches and some money. And there's a lot of... Uh, oh, lizard furnace is uh, useful for some stuff as well. And solar tablet fragments. So you get these solar tablet fragments in uh, a lot of the chests, as well as as a drop from some of the enemies when you're down here. Um, and you can actually use eight of those to craft a uh, an actual solar tablet and that allows you to actually summon a uh, solar eclipse yeah so these are the lizard guys and they sound like cats but they're lizards <laughs> I guess you get regular uh, jungle enemies in here as well to a lesser degree. I got a ton of those guys stacked down there. Okay, so um, basically these trap filled corridors lead down to one large room where you will find an altar. And I'll show you that when I get there, but that's where you fight the boss, which is Golem. So I will be showing you the temple and Golem, the boss fight. There are a lot of these guys. Stop that. Stop that. I think they walk, and then when you damage them a bit, then they start crawling. So yeah, the Danger Sense Potion is one way of detecting the traps. Um, I have also brought my money trough along with me here. It allows me to get to my piggy bank, where I've stored another way, which is uh, if you... Oh yeah, jeez, I need to uh, have this on. So I am immune to... You're going to want your medicated bandage or your uh, bezoar, which is one of the ingredients for that. Which will make you immune to poison. Uh, and this is what I'm talking about. If I take this mechanical lens, which I bought from the mechanic out, um, that will also show me where the wiring is and by extension where the traps are. So basically these traps are activated by pressure plates as usual. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, there was another pressure plate. Anyway, I'll be right back there. Okay, so as I was saying, uh, Danger Sense potions are helpful because they highlight um, not only the actual traps, but the uh, spikes as well. And whereas, um, if you, you can actually just hold any wire-related item, like a wrench, um, 
and so on, which will also show, of course, where all the wiring is. Um, so there's advantages and disadvantages of the potion versus one of those, but, um, you know, better than holding an item all the time, because, of course, you have to fight the enemies, is to get the, uh, again, the da -da -da, mechanical lens, which you get from the mechanic NPC, and that just sits in your inventory and it's going to show, show you all the wiring like what you see here. So I am trying to make my way through here, down, down to the bottom of the jungle temple, where eventually I will find the golem boss. And these enemies, the flying snakes and the lizards, they're going to drop some of those uh, solar tablet fragments as well. So you can farm lots of those if you want to you know, do the solar eclipse um, at a time and a place of your choosing, let's say. <laughs> You can get, you know, some of those in the chest, and you can also get those from the enemies. The other thing is the, um, as I said, the power cells, the lizard power cells. Which you're going to need to summon golem, actually. That's the only thing that those are good for. Uh, so there's an altar in the big room, and you're going to need one of those power cells to fight go the golem boss. Um, now, you can keep fighting him. You can fight him over and over if you like. You'll just, uh, it'll just use one of those power cells each time. So uh, you'll probably, if you're making a way through here like I am, you'll end up with a bunch of those. I'm just using, I've got uh, my unlimited musket uh, pouch here, so endless musket pouch, and so, you know, that way I'm not worrying about ammo. That's if you're a ranged player, of course. And, um, yeah, ranged players and magic users will have a bit of an advantage over uh, when fighting the golem boss, because... Uh, you can stay at a distance, and he's basically uh, more of a big, scary, uh, hands-on kind of guy. <laughs> and, uh... So if you can stay away from him, that's going to be helpful. Okay, and I'm making my way further along. And I think this is probably the final level. As I say, it's not that big. It's not as big as the dungeon. Um, this is a small world, actually. It's a small world, after all. <laughs> just want to clear these guys out before I head down there. Since I am using the Shroomite armor, Good to hold on for a second and then fire because then I can get my stealth bonus. You gotta even be careful collecting your uh, money and other loot because there are traps. <laughs> you gotta watch out for spikes and stuff. And it's a good idea, as I say, also to have either a bezoar or medicated bandage, one of those things derived from the bezoar, to save you from the uh, poison. Kind of good in the jungle temple in general, really. <laughs> or not in the jungle temple, in the jungle in general. There are many poisonous things in the jungle. Okay, so... Hmm. Oh god, that was the altar. I didn't mean to summon him yet. Okay, um... <laughs> Ouch. Okay, I was gonna do a big complicated boss setup. Um... <laughs> I was wondering, hey, why is that thing glowing? Let's check it out. Oh, that's the altar. So when you see the glowing thing, don't just automatically activate it. But yeah, he's got, uh, in his initial stage, he's got two basic attacks. He's got his uh, 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to come back and do it properly. <laughs> I'll show you the setup, the uh, boss fight arena. All right, so I have built my boss arena. Um, let me explain a few of the things I've done here. So first of all, I've put walls. This was my entrance. It was like an upward ramping entrance. Um, so I've put walls there to block the flow of lizard enemies coming in here um, and just generally keep the uh, spawn of other enemies down as much as possible. I've also, of course, lit the area so I can see what's going on. I've um, mined out the various traps. I've left the wires for now, but... Uh, I have mined out the traps so that I don't get hurt by those, including all the wooden spikes and stuff that were all over the floor. Now, as you can see, this is not a particularly large room. Uh, if you're lucky, you'll get a little bigger room. Um, but I've made some platforms. I've tried to flatten this out. Actually, the altar happened to be sitting on some spike traps down here, so I was able to pick it up and I put it up there. Um, and I kind of built these walls around so that hopefully that will contain Golem uh, and I can kind of uh, have a relatively easy time by just firing through the hole and then coming up here and firing down at him. Um, basically, Golem has like a jumping thing, so I put some walls above him as well, uh, above where I think he's going to be. And that should allow me to kind of contain him a bit there. Um, so I've got my pirate minion over here, uh, whatever minion of your choosing, of course. I've got uh, various other things prepared, so I can, you know, drop a queen spider over here. I can uh, put some... The uh, Nimbus Rod clouds supposedly are very useful. Um, and I should put my Cursed Inferno, my uh, Clinger Staff wall there. Um, I've got a Rocket Launcher, Flamethrower, Uzi. <laughs> I've got lots of uh, weapons that are going to be good for this. Um, basically, hopefully, the idea is that he's going to be trapped in there. So let's use the Pumpkin Pie, Regeneration. Iron skin, and hopefully he's going to have enough room to spawn here. Yep, there we go. And the other thing is that, uh, okay, so at the beginning, his first phase, he has these fists that will come out and try to try to uh, hit you. As you can see, um, his fist will exchange right or extend right across the whole arena. But if I'm able to contain it there, just by hitting it, it'll go back. So I can basically sit here and take out his fist. Now you don't have to take out the fists actually. But um, I would say it sounds like a good idea to me, uh, because those will actually otherwise last all through the fight. So I'm going to try to take out his uh, fist first, personally. And then you have to take out his head, and that's what's going to advance you to the next phase. When his head is at half health, he'll start firing eye lasers. You'll see that uh, hopefully fairly shortly. But you can see how putting these walls in really helped a lot. And uh, he's doing the jumping thing, but he can't really go anywhere. So uh, I'm going to cast some of these back above his head. That has now taken out his other uh, fist. Now I'm free to... Yeah, there we go. If I can put that right in the middle of him. Um, basically, he's pretty screwed right now. Oh, now he's firing. See, he's screwed enough that he's firing lasers at me, which is all well and good. Um, now, the only danger is I didn't really give, like, a, a, a middle part of the arena to uh, be able to fire at his head. So I'm kind of relying on my uh, Nimbus Rod staff for that. Doing most of the damage there. You can see his head is now almost uh, all the way damaged, and then he's going to enter his first, his second phase. There he is. So you now can't hurt his head. Um, so I'm just going to go in here, and if I'm lucky... Oh, 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 don't want to do that. Yeah, you're going to have to dodge his uh, head's lasers. And this is why, ultimately, you do require a lot of movement. Right, that'll get him a little. Do not want to get trapped in there with him, though. There we go. Got a health potion in. 
and yeah, you cannot damage his uh, head, so you need to go in here, and that's why I left some gaps so I can fire at him a bit. You can even get kind of down there underneath him and fire up, but uh, you're probably going to want to try more of a approach of... Oh, damn. <laughs> My clouds ran out. You see what I'm doing there, though? I'm going to want to put another gap in the middle here so I can fire at him a little easier and maybe another platform, um, which is the general recommendation. The recommendation is that you have that um, sort of wall floor to ceiling, but you leave a gap at the top, a gap at the bottom, and a gap in the middle. I didn't think my arena was big enough for the gap in the middle, but you know what? I think uh, it's going to be a good idea to have that as well. So I'll get right back to that, give him another go, and uh, we'll see you there shortly. All right, so this should be one last time. Uh, some other preparations I had brought along but then forgotten all about. Um, campfire to increase regeneration. Ammo box um, to give it a boost to uh, not using as much ammo. Uh, the crystal ball to give you a little uh, mana boost and uh, mana damage boost. Sharpening station to uh, give me the boost to melee. So you can see those are all here. 20% chance not to consume ammo, magic powers increased, and melee weapons have armor penetration, which is helpful. And then the uh, cozy fire boost. I got my pirates. So, um, yeah, that's all going to help. And so let's try to set this up. I put my little gap in the middle there to make it easier for me to uh, hit the guy. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to put all this right here, and let's fire it up again. And yeah, interestingly, the way that I uh, that this happened to work out, you can see his fist actually projects just through my wall, which makes it easier for me to hit that first fist. Should be a little easier to get around now with that extra platform, that extra gap. Um, should be easier to hit his head in the second uh, part of the first stage of the boss, but it should also be able to be easier to hit his body uh, once that head comes off. So uh, that's what I'm going for. I think. This should all go a lot better this time around. Oh, you know what? I'm just realizing even as I'm saying that, one other thing I forgot is to switch out to uh, my equipment. So over here, um, I don't think I need the uh, protection against um, poisoning there at this point. So switch that out in favor of a uh, little bonus range damage. And yeah, this part's easy, so I might as well get it set up properly. There we go. And there we go. Sure enough, I can just shoot right through here. The other thing is that I also forgot last time I was in a bit of a panic is that I did bring some uh, better um, bullets. Yeah, so I'm taking... You can see his head has a ton of uh, power there. 16,000. And now he's on to his laser portion, a little tougher. Because he can shoot those lasers right through the walls, so even if you ham them in with the walls as I have, um, that's still going to be at the tough part once his head starts firing the lasers. Important time for a health potion that was. get a little closer so I can put those clouds back in place because those are a big, big help. Now, I had read that um, the head was only supposed to fire lasers in the first half of each section, but I'm gonna survive long enough to try to get another health potion here. Uh oh. Damn. Okay, one more try. So again, I forgot a couple little things. I had forgotten to take my pumpkin pie in regeneration. <laughs> Every little bit helps, you know. Um, it really does matter, it all adds up. 
And uh, obviously I undoubtedly could be doing a little bit better job, but um, the other thing is I didn't switch to my better ammo. Once the head with the lasers was flying around. In fact, even before that, I think, uh, well, yeah, mostly when he's flying around. <laughs> that's, uh, that's mostly when you're going to need that. But I did, actually, I created from the very beginning, I had, uh, you might notice if you go back, um, I had all this chlorified bullets in my uh, ammo stack. And I actually have uh, rockets as well, so I hadn't put the uh, rockets in my uh, ammo. So those are things that probably would make a huge, huge difference if I just uh, pull them out and use them. So let's give it a try and find out. So again, I, I did uh, go to my little stations here and get all those bonuses in place. I also um, happened to run into a bunch of mimics. I don't know if it's a thing where mimics spawn more often in the uh, jungle temple, but I did run into some mimics. I was able to combine my uh, regeneration charm with uh, the philosopher's stone and get the spike charm of myths. So the charm of myths um, allows you to do some uh, additional stuff as well. It uh, means that the cooldown time between when I can use health potions is shorter. Um, so that's very useful. Yeah, this seems like a good time to get that out of there and, you know, use my better uh, <laughs> ammo. Make good use of that uh, reduced cooldown on my health potions maybe as well. So I think what I'm going to do... Another thing, I have a flamethrower. Flamethrower is supposed to be uh, useful here as well. Okay, so yeah, what I'm going to do here is stick these rockets in my inventory. Actually, those are rocket one, I want rocket three. Um, I've got a rocket launcher, so let's use that. <laughs> now, unfortunately, I didn't bring the helmet to go with my Shroomite armor to use the, the rockets and get the most damage out of them, which is something I should have thought of as well. Watch where your cursor is. <laughs> okay. but I was in time to get another uh, healing potion in, and yeah, I think this rocket launcher is going to make the difference here. Um, I don't even have time to run in and... Yep, there we go. <laughs> rocket launcher made the difference. So watch which weapons you use. Um, I should have had my, my helmet um, for my Shroomite armor for the rocket launcher bonus as well. That would have probably gone a long way. I had my flamethrower. <laughs> which I could have probably made better use of, but let's see what I got. Um, so I got some beetle husks. Uh, so for those who are using the beetle armor, that's going to be uh, very helpful, of course. Um, yeah, so, so you have to defeat the golem to make the beetle armor. That's a melee set. And I may as well not waste uh, good bullets now. We'll take those out, but anyway... Um, yeah, you have to defeat Golem to get enough beetle husks to make the beetle armor if you're a melee player. Um, I happen to get the Golem Fist, which is a melee weapon. This could be fun. So let's show you what that is. It's a lot like the KO Glove, which I had like way, way back. Um, it's just much, much more powerful, obviously, and has a longer range. And it's very, very fast to use. So um, that's going to be helpful. I got the Golem Mask, which is just vanity. So yeah, if I... Don't go invisible, you can see what that looks like. Um, so there's a 1 8th chance to get a bunch of different things. So, uh, 1 8th chance of getting a stinger, which is uh, sort of like a rocket launcher, but it fires uh, stinger bolts and they explode. The difference is, one difference is that um, when it explodes, it doesn't hurt you, <laughs> which is not the case with the rocket launcher. you got to watch it yourself with that. Um, a possessed hatchet is uh, one of the 1 8th chance things. Now, that would be awesome. It's kind of like the banana rings and the light discs, except that it's just one item and you can keep throwing more and more of them. You don't need to stack a bunch up. Um, it's like a boomerang type item that you throw it, it comes back to you. It does huge damage. It's uh, apparently very good against the Duke Fishtron boss, which I will show you hopefully not too long. Uh, you can get the Sunstone, which is like the Moonstone, except that it's during the day. It gives you bonuses on uh, damage and melee and stuff. Um, 
you can get the Eye of the Golem, which uh, I forget what that does, but it's it's helpful. Um, I think it's yeah, it gives you an increase to critical strike chance, I believe. You can get the Pick Saw, which is uh, a stronger pickaxe. It uh, has a plus one range. My uh, Spectre pickaxe has plus three. Um, so that one has a plus one range, but the thing is it's really, really fast. It's not quite as fast as the Shroomite Digging Claw, but it is very fast. It's close, um, and it also has more range. It has a bonus to range, whereas the Shroomite Digging Claw has a penalty. So it's kind of a little bit of the best of both worlds of the Spectre Pickaxe and the Shroomite Digging Claw. Um, and there's a Heat Ray, <laughs> which is a magic weapon, I believe. Um, fires in one big straight line, can hit a whole bunch of enemies at once. There is a Staff of Earth, which fires like a, a big boulder, which does uh, damage, especially if it's moving quickly. And then there's the Golem Fist, which I just got. So you have a 1 8th chance of getting each of those. Um, I, of course, only got one. And there's some other stuff that happens when you defeat the Golem. Um, you will now find cultists at the dungeon entrance. I could actually go see them. Um, yeah, why not? I'm just standing here, right? Um, I'm not going to do anything with them right now, but uh, I'll show you what they look like. So, let's see, which side is my uh, dungeon on again? <laughs> yeah, it's over there. That's what I thought. Okay, so I'm going to make my way over there while I tell you some of the rest. Um, so, the cultists will spawn at the dungeon entrance. Um, basically, it's not automatic. You have to do some stuff, but that leads to um, fighting the lunatic cultist and eventually um, the various... Uh, lunar events, including, of course, the Moon Lord being the culmination of all that. Um, the other thing is that Martian probes now begin to spawn once you've defeated Golem. Um, so Martian probes, it, it's a random spawn. They don't always, like, they're not, like, there all the time, but um, they will begin to spawn now, and that can lead to the Martian Madness event. Um, so, of course, both of those things, the, the lunar events, the cultist, um, all that stuff leads to all kinds of cooler equipment, as per usual. <laughs> um, so let's just go uh, keep on in this direction, and we'll have a look at the cultists. I think you have to provoke them, and then the lunatic cultists will come. Yep, see, there we go. There's the blue cultist, archer, lunatic, devotees. Two of each, the mysterious tablet. I think maybe you have to smash that or something, I forget. Anyway, that's one of the things that happens once you defeat Golem right there. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, basically you have to defeat Golem to uh, progress further in the game. So there we are. Um, hope you liked the video. And uh, well, through my successes and my failures, I hope you learned uh, some things about how to fight Golem and defeat Golem. And again, hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.